Good evening. Here are tonight's top stories. The police have arrested two men with nearly 10 kilograms of marijuana in Amelia's ward. A fire has ravaged a home in Ostend Canal Number、no. Two, leaving a pensioner and resident displaced. Guyana condemns Venezuela's attempted annexation of sovereign territory. Vice President Jagdeo addresses electricity woes with GPL. Additionally, three women magistrates have been appointed as commissioners of title in Guyana. Parents were denied the release of their baby's body for funeral rites after the infant's death at New Amsterdam Hospital. In legal matters, a construction worker received a 12-month sentence for cell phone theft, while a truck driver was granted $1 million bail for causing a fatal accident. Furthermore, a man's body was discovered floating in a creek along Linden Soestijk Highway, and a security guard and construction worker were arrested with marijuana at a Weldad roadblock. Finally. A man has been remanded for chopping his partner at East Bank Burbis. Stay tuned for further updates. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more news. Police arrest two men with nearly 10 kilograms of marijuana in Amelia's ward. Police in Regional Division Number、no. 10 apprehended two individuals found in possession of 9,979 grams of suspected cannabis, marijuana, in Amelia's ward last evening. Additionally, another person was arrested for attempting to offer a bribe of $453,000 to the police in exchange for the release of the suspects. The incident unfolded around 1947 HRS on Wednesday when police officers were on mobile patrol duty near Amelia's Ward Station District in Linden. They observed a white car bearing license plate number PAC 9138 traveling from the Karakara area. Attempting to approach the vehicle, the car accelerated suddenly. Upon reaching Block 42, the driver abruptly stopped the vehicle. Both the driver and a passenger in the front seat swiftly exited the car, carrying two bulky black plastic bags from the back seat. Sensing something amiss, the officers intervened and intercepted the suspects before they could discard the bags into nearby bushes. Upon inspection, the bags were found to contain leaves, seeds, and stems suspected to be cannabis. The driver, identified as Keenan Fraser, a 24-year-old taxi driver from Phase 2 Central Amelia's Ward, and the passenger, Nakasil Charles, a 21-year-old pork knocker from Central Amelia's Ward, were informed of the offense and subsequently arrested. Fraser attempted to negotiate with the officers, while Charles remained silent. Both were escorted to the Mackenzie Police Station along with the vehicle and the suspected cannabis. Upon arrival at the station, Sean Easton, a 33-year-old construction worker, approached the police ranks and offered them $453,000 as an inducement for the release of the two suspects. Easton was promptly arrested, and the cash was seized as evidence. The suspected cannabis was weighed in the presence of the suspects and amounted to 9,979 grams. The three individuals are currently in police custody pending charges. Authorities continue their investigation into the matter. Fire ravages Ostend Canal Number、no. Two home, leaving pensioner and resident displaced. In the late hours of Wednesday night, a devastating fire engulfed a residence in Ostend Canal Number、no. Two, West Bank Demerara, WBD, displacing two individuals and leaving them to contemplate their next steps. Among those affected are 65-year-old Saradio Cumberbatch and T Kumar Singh, 35, who were occupying the house at the time of the incident. According to reports, the fire broke out around 23:00 HRS, quickly spreading through the structure. Despite efforts to contain it, the blaze consumed the two-story wooden and concrete house along with all its contents. Tragically, the owners of the property reside overseas, compounding the challenges faced by the displaced residents. Upon receiving the distress call, three fire tenders and a team of 11 firefighters rushed to the scene. Their immediate focus was on extinguishing the inferno and preventing further damage. However, their efforts were unable to salvage the property, resulting in its complete destruction. The intensity of the fire also inflicted damage on a neighboring house, with a sash window being destroyed due to the heat generated by the flames. In the wake of the disaster, the Guyana Fire Service has launched an investigation to ascertain the cause of the fire. 
Meanwhile, Cumberbatch, Singh, and other affected parties are left grappling with the aftermath, unsure of their immediate future. Guyana condemns Venezuela's attempted annexation of sovereign territory. The government of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana has issued a strong condemnation of the President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela's action to promulgate the Organic Law for the Defense of Guyana Esequiba on April 3, 2024. This move by Venezuela, aimed at annexing more than two-thirds of Guyana's sovereign territory and incorporating it into Venezuela, is deemed a blatant violation of fundamental principles of international law. It contravenes key documents such as the United Nations Charter, the Charter of the Organization of American States, and customary international law. Moreover, it directly contradicts the Joint Declaration of Argyle for Dialogue and Peace, agreed upon by both Guyana and Venezuela on December 14, 2023, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Guyana asserts that Venezuela's actions cast out on its commitment to uphold the principles outlined in the Joint Declaration of Argyle. Consequently, Guyana warns Venezuela, along with regional and international bodies including the governments of the Caribbean community and the Latin American and Caribbean community of nations, as well as the Secretary General of the United Nations and the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, that it will not tolerate any annexation, seizure, or occupation of its sovereign territory. The statement reaffirms Guyana's adherence to the United Nations Charter, the rule of law, and the peaceful settlement of disputes. It highlights the 1966 Geneva Agreement, to which both Venezuela and Guyana are parties, and emphasizes that the International Court of Justice has jurisdiction over the case brought before it by Guyana regarding the validity of the 1899 arbitral award that delineated the land boundary between the two nations. The court's forthcoming decision will be binding on both parties. Guyana asserts that if Venezuela wishes to contest the title to the territory in question, the appropriate forum is the International Court of Justice, which will adjudicate the matter impartially and in accordance with established legal principles. Additionally, Guyana expresses dismay over offensive remarks made by President Maduro concerning the President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Such remarks undermine the commitment to good neighborliness, peaceful coexistence, and unity in Latin America and the Caribbean, as outlined in the Argyle Declaration. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation underscores the seriousness of the situation and reaffirms Guyana's commitment to defending its sovereign territory and pursuing peaceful resolution through established legal channels. Vice President Jagdeo addresses electricity woes with GPL. In a candid address at the People's Progressive Party Civic, PPP-C, Freedom House a headquarters in Georgetown, Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdeo confronted the pressing issue of electricity shortages in Guyana, acknowledging the frustration felt by citizens amidst frequent power outages. With a stark assessment, Jagdeo declared, the situation is bad, underscoring the urgency of the matter and the imperative for immediate action. Despite repeated explanations regarding the challenges faced by the Guyana Power and Light GPL, Jagdeo recognized that citizens' lives are disrupted each time the lights go out. Assuring the public of the government's commitment to addressing the crisis, Jagdeo outlined short-term measures, including plans to procure 40 to 80 megawatts MW of power to meet growing demand until the completion of the 300 megawatts gas to energy project at Wales, West Bank Demerara, WBD. Additionally, efforts are underway to repair and enhance the existing transmission and distribution network. Highlighting the government's ongoing pursuit of the Amela Falls hydropower project, Jagdeo criticized opposition parties for impeding its progress, emphasizing that this project could have significantly alleviated Guyana's energy challenges by now. Moreover, the government is investing in solar power projects to diversify the country's energy sources. Once implemented, existing power generation sets will be reserved for emergency use only. Despite the challenges faced by GPL, Jagdeo stressed that the government has long recognized the need for additional power supply to meet increasing demand. He refuted claims that the Amela Falls hydropower project would not have resulted in lower electricity costs, stating that hydropower could have been generated at significantly reduced rates compared to current expenses. 
In conclusion, Jagdeo reiterated the government's unwavering commitment to addressing Guyana's electricity woes and called for cooperation from all stakeholders to achieve sustainable solutions. Three women magistrates appointed as commissioners of title in Guyana. The Judicial Service Commission of Guyana has announced the appointment of three accomplished women, currently serving as magistrates, to serve as commissioners of title in the land court in Essequibo and Burbis. The newly appointed commissioners are Esther Sam, Renita Singh, and Crystal Lambert. Esther Sam, a graduate of Queen's College, pursued her Bachelor of Laws degree at the University of Guyana and furthered her legal studies at the Hugh Wooding Law School. She began her legal career as a state counsel in the chambers of the Attorney General and later transitioned to the magistracy in 2017. Throughout her tenure, she has presided in various magistrates' courts across Guyana. Renita Camille Singh, who commenced her secondary education at North Georgetown Secondary and the Bishops High School, also obtained her Bachelor of Laws degree from the University of Guyana. She joined the chambers of the Director of Public Prosecutions in 2011 and was later appointed to the magistracy in 2014. With a decade of experience, Singh has served as a magistrate in both Georgetown and Burbis. Crystal Lambert holds a Bachelor of Laws from the University of Guyana, a legal education certificate from the Hugh Wooding Law School, and advanced degrees in criminology and criminal justice from the University of the West Indies and oil and gas law from the University of Aberdeen. Admitted to the bar in Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago in 2011, Lambert began her career as a judicial research assistant in Trinidad and Tobago before serving as a magistrate in Bartica upon her return to Guyana in 2015. The oath of office for their appointment as commissioners of title will be administered by Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips on Friday, marking a significant milestone in their legal careers and contributions to the justice system of Guyana. Parents denied release of baby's body for funeral after death at New Amsterdam Hospital. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, the parents of a less than one-month-old baby who passed away at the New Amsterdam Hospital are facing anguish and frustration as officials refuse to release the infant's body for burial. Devika Ramnarine and Gobindra Sahadio, grieving parents of the deceased baby, Ayan Sahadio, have been left distraught after being unable to collect their child's corpse for funeral rites. Ayan, who spent four weeks in the neonatal intensive care unit, NICU, of the hospital, tragically succumbed to his condition on March 28. Born prematurely at the Port Morant Hospital on March 2, Ayan faced complications from the outset, necessitating immediate transfer to the New Amsterdam Hospital due to respiratory issues. Despite the efforts of medical staff, including treatment for an infection, Ayan's condition deteriorated, leading to his untimely demise. Following Ion's passing, his grieving parents sought to lay him to rest, but were met with obstacles. Despite making arrangements for the funeral and attempting to collect the body on Tuesday, they were informed that an autopsy was required before release, a requirement that was not communicated earlier. This delay in releasing the baby's body has left the family in a state of despair, compounded by the emotional and financial strain of preparing for a funeral that could not take place as planned. Gobindra Sahadio, the father, expressed his distress, highlighting the logistical and emotional toll of the situation. Despite repeated attempts to retrieve the body, bureaucratic hurdles persist, leaving the family pleading for compassionate intervention to facilitate the release of their child's remains for burial. As the family navigates this heartbreaking ordeal, they appeal for empathy and urgency from hospital officials and authorities to expedite the process and allow them to bid a dignified farewell to their beloved baby boy. Construction worker receives 12-month sentence for cell phone theft. Bunting Jr., a construction worker, stood before Magistrate Latchman at the Georgetown Magistrates Court, where he faced a larceny charge. Jr. pleaded guilty to the charge, admitting that on Wednesday, on North Road in Lacey Town, Georgetown, he stole Sandy Ramdahl's Samsung A205 cell phone, valued at $56,000. The court heard that Ramdahl was aboard a minibus that stopped at a corner in Lacey Town when Junior disembarked at the same time. In a swift motion, Junior snatched the phone from Ramdahl's hand and attempted to flee. 
However, his escape was thwarted when police and concerned citizens intervened, leading to his apprehension and subsequent arrest. Despite efforts, the victim's phone was not recovered. When questioned by the magistrate about his actions, Jr. maintained that he had no intention to steal, stating, I did not intend to steal. Considering the gravity of the offense and its prevalence, the magistrate sentenced Jr. to 12 months imprisonment. The swift response by law enforcement and public-spirited individuals underscores the community's commitment to tackling crime and ensuring accountability for offenders. The verdict serves as a reminder of the consequences of criminal actions and the importance of upholding the rule of law. Truck driver granted $1 million bail for causing fatal accident. A 42-year-old truck driver, Diodat Ramanand, hailing from Good Hope Maheka, East Coast Demerara, ECD, appeared before Principal Magistrate Judy Latchman at the Georgetown Magistrate's Court. He faced a charge of causing the death of Temeka Kerr due to dangerous driving and was granted bail in the sum of $1 million. During his first court appearance, Ramanand was not required to enter a plea to the indictable charge. The incident leading to the charge occurred on February 15, 2024, at the junction of Camp Street and Brick Dam. According to the facts presented in court, Ramanand was driving motor lorry number GMM 9622 East along the northern drive lane of Brick Dam at a high speed, despite the traffic light signal flashing red in his direction. Simultaneously, motorcar PWW 7944, driven by Kerr, was proceeding north along the western drive lane of Camp Street, with a traffic light signal flashing amber in her direction. Both drivers failed to adhere to the traffic light signals, resulting in a collision between their vehicles. Kerr, along with three occupants of her vehicle, sustained injuries and were hospitalized. Tragically, Kerr succumbed to her injuries while receiving treatment on March 23, 2024, at about 1.30 hrs. Following an investigation, Ramanand was charged and appeared in court. He was represented by attorney at law Patrice Henry. The defendant is scheduled to return to court on May 22, 2024, as legal proceedings continue. Man's body discovered floating in creek along Linden Sosdike Highway. Authorities have confirmed the grim discovery of a man's body found floating in a creek along the Linden slash Sosdike Highway on Tuesday. The deceased has been identified as 31-year-old Derek Barry, who was last seen alive a few days prior to the discovery. Police were alerted to the finding on Tuesday morning. Barry was reportedly found floating face down in the creek, with no visible signs of violence on his remains. Upon initial investigations, law enforcement removed the body and transferred it to Memorial Gardens Funeral Home. An autopsy is scheduled to determine the cause of his death. Security guard and construction worker arrested with marijuana at Weldad Roadblock. Two men, including an Atlas Security Service guard, were apprehended on Wednesday, April 3, 2024, around 1700 hours hours, during a roadblock conducted by Weldad Police Station ranks. The operation led to the interception of a motor car bearing license plate number HD 1785, heading towards Georgetown. Upon halting the vehicle, officers requested to search both the car and its occupants. Compliance was observed as the driver and four passengers, including 29-year-old Ian Williams, known as a black boy, and 21-year-old Hyacy Saul, exited the vehicle along with their belongings. During the search, a large parcel wrapped in transparent plastic, suspected to contain cannabis, was discovered in Ian Williams' bag. Williams, a security guard residing at 107 Virginogan, EBE, admitted to owning the drug, stating he was attempting a hustle. Similarly, a transparent plastic containing suspected cannabis was found in Hyacy Saul's bag. Saul, a construction worker residing at 47 Stanley Town, New Amsterdam, Burbis, admitted to owning the drug for personal use. Despite a thorough search of the vehicle and the remaining passengers, no suspicious items were found. The confiscated drugs, along with Williams and Saul, were escorted to Weldad Police Station, where the suspected narcotics were weighed. Williams' stash amounted to 2,385 kilograms, while Saul's weighed 43 grams. 
Both individuals are currently in custody at Fort Wellington Police Station as the investigation continues. Statements have been obtained as part of ongoing proceedings. Man remanded for chopping partner at East Bank Burbis. 44-year-old Mumshwar Hemraj, a carpenter residing at Lot 3 Highbury Village, East Bank Burbis, was remanded to prison on Tuesday after being charged with attempting to commit murder on his partner, 56-year-old Diomedy Rampersad. Appearing before Magistrate Michelle Mathias at the New Amsterdam Magistrates Court, Hemraj was not required to enter a plea and was remanded to prison. The case was adjourned until April 29th for further proceedings. The incident, which occurred around 21.30 hours on March 27, unfolded when Rampersad and Hemraj were at home in the upper flat of her two-story wooden and concrete house. An argument erupted over Rampersad's phone call with a male friend, leading to a confrontation. Rampersad informed investigators that during the altercation, she threatened to eject Hemraj from the house. In response, Hemraj became agitated and retrieved a cutlass from behind the bedroom door, subsequently inflicting several severe chops on Rampersad's body. Following the attack, Hemraj transported Rampersad to the New Amsterdam Public Hospital for medical treatment. She is currently admitted to the female surgical ward, where her condition is described as serious but stable. Rampersad and Hemraj, who have been in a common-law relationship for about two years, have reportedly been experiencing trust issues. Hemraj was apprehended on the day of the incident and has since been in custody.